Hey guys, what's up? So today I wanted to quickly take you through the setup of the Micro Minim OSD. It's pretty straightforward and easy. All right, let's get started. So first I wanna identify some of the pads on the board. So starting from the top right, we have ground, and then ground again, and then five volt, and then RX or receive, and then TX or transmit, and then DTR, or depending on which uh, FTDI you're using, might be related to green. Okay, coming over here to these two pads, the top one is going to be ground, and the bottom one is going to be five volt in. Jumping down to the bottom, this is where you're going to be connecting it to your flight controller. And starting with this bottom right pad, we have ground, battery one, battery two, RSSI, current, and ground again. All right, now onto these four. Starting at the bottom, we have video out, ground, video in, and ground. So most of you are already going to understand exactly what this means, where you would connect things, but if you don't, quickly walk through it right now. So what you would do is the yellow or video wire coming from your FPV camera would connect right here to the video in and the black wire from your FPV camera would connect right here to ground. Then you would take the ground out to your video transmitter and you would take the yellow wire video out to your video transmitter. So the pads along the bottom may or may not all be used depending on what it is that you are needing to achieve out of using the Micro Minim OSD. Okay, let's get to uh, connecting this thing up and being able to actually program it. So what we need to do is we need to, to take an FTDI adapter, which I'm gonna move this guy out of the way just a second here, slide him over. Okay, so this is the FTDI adapter. I've got two servo cables connected to it right now. And as you can see, this one's actually already labeled. So we have ground, ground, voltage, TX, RX, and DTR. Or again, remember this may be green depending on uh, the OSD that you're using, whether you're using the micro minim OSD or the regular minim OSD. Okay, so what we need to do is get the micro minim OSD to communicate with the FTDI board. In order to do that, we're going to take servo wires, strip them, tin them, and we're going to just put a light solder right to these pads. Now, something to keep in mind is the TX from the FTDI adapter is going to the RX on the Micro Minim OSD, and the TX on the Micro Minim OSD is going to the RX on the FTDI adapter. Other than that, it's a straight one-for-one -one connection. All right, let's get to this. I'm just going to put a small tin on each one of these wires, which is going to make soldering them to the Micro Minim OSD that much easier. With that done, I am going to quickly tin the Micro Minim OSD. Okay, now that all the soldering is done and we have a way for the FTDI adapter to communicate to the Micro Minim OSD, we are going to connect it to the computer, flash it, configure it the way that you would like, and go from there. We'll be ready to solder it to the flight controller and have everything set up. So in this case, it's a micro USB cable. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. As soon as it's plugged in, you should see some LEDs. So we have a red indicator here on the FTDI adapter indicating that power is being received to the board from the USB. And then here on the uh, Minim OSD, you have a blue indicating that power is there. And then you have a green one, which will uh, sometimes be on, sometimes be off, sometimes be flashing, indicating that data is being sent or received Okay guys, so we have the Multi-Wii OSD configurator here. I will put a link down in the description to where you can go and get it. This is version 1.8. First thing we are going to do is flash this board, okay? All right guys, so to flash the firmware, just come up here and click on the button that says flash. It's going to load this page. Uh, you can choose to do the beta releases or the test releases as they're calling it. If you want, tick this box. Uh, I'm not going to, I would rather 
use stable releases. So for the version, uh, we're going to go with the newest, 1.8.1.0. And for the device, it's going to be a micro minimum. For the variant, uh, this is going to be connected to the KISS flight controller, so I'm going to choose KISS. And for the type, it's going to be multi-rotor. Uh, I'm going to choose to load the online hex firmware. All right, it's downloading it. You can see in the right, done. And so now I'm going to go ahead and click flash. So now it's doing that. Yeah, that's done. So now we can close this. And we need to connect. Pretty simple, click the connect button. Leave the baud rate set to default, click connect. You'll notice here it says waiting for OSD. Waiting for OSD. Once it establishes the connection, there we go, the read is done, and we are there. And what you've got here is you have all the different tabs that indicate the uh, different information that you can use. Uh, so we're going to start here, the intro tab, you can go ahead and there's all kinds of helpful guides, frequently asked questions, things like that, uh, surrounding this. So if you really want to dig into it, you can get the information here. We're going to jump right to the main voltage. So we'll go ahead and choose what you want here. In this case, we're going to use direct connect voltage. Auto detect the cell and alarm. Okay, so that's the rest. We don't need to do anything there. Video voltage can choose to uh, put that in if you want. Amperage, if you have a current sensor, um, you can choose to do that also. Your RSSI, uh, in this case I want to read the RSSI from the flight controller. And there's that, call sign if you want, other. So the video signal type is currently set to auto. You can change this from NTSC or PAL. I choose to prefer auto. And there we go, uh, your unit of measure, uh, imperial or metric, and that should be good enough. GPS, again, if you're gonna be using that, uh, the layout. You can have multiple layouts if you wish on a switch. So you could have, uh, depending on the position of the switch, high, medium, or low, you might have different layouts, right? So uh, this would be particularly helpful for fixed wing. So if you're going to be using a fixed wing, and perhaps if you're just up cruising around, you might just want some minimum information up there. Maybe uh, your voltage, your band, GPS coordinates, and whatever. But if you're coming in for a landing, perhaps you have uh, your artificial horizon and your altitude, your variometer, all of those things. Uh, so anyhow, there, there's many, many different settings, and you can have them assigned to a switch if you want them. I'm only gonna use one. I just want it to keep it simple. So, <laughs> no pun intended. So we're gonna have just simply the arm state in the center. We're gonna have the RSSI. We're going to have the battery voltage and then we're going to have a timer. That's it, that's all I want. You would just go ahead and you would click write. Notice that it's saying it's writing, it's reading, done. That's it. You can now go ahead and disconnect. So we'll go ahead and do a quick overview. Once it's done flashing, you're just gonna click connect. It's automatically going to read the information from the OSD and it's going to display it down below. I have this one configured very simply. All I want to see is the state of the quad, in this case, armed or disarmed, the RSSI, the battery voltage, and a timer. That's really all I need. You have all of these tabs across the top which will give you the ability to uh, modify and edit and add all of the different features uh, surrounding the OSD. Right down here, you have all of the actual features to display on the OSD, and you can, in fact, grab and drag them around. So now that you have it set up the way you want it, you would simply click Write. It would write the data to the OSD. You could save it to a file if you want, if you think you're gonna be using it again for multiple quads. And once it's done, uh, you can just, to prove that it did in fact write it, you can click read again. And it's you can see it's all there, and it's laid out the way that I'd like it. That's it. Now we can click disconnect. Now we can go solder this thing up to the flight controller, test it out and see how it works. Okay, so here's everything connected, powered up, 
I'm running everything off of a PDB and I've got the video transmitter coming off of a 12 volt and then I've got that looping over here to the OSD on the video out. I've got a 5 volt direct line coming from the video transmitter to the camera. I've got video in coming here and then I have the transmit going to the receive on the KISS, receive going to transmit. I've got ground going to the ground pad underneath. I've got the RXSR connected right here. And then I've got the KISS flight controller being powered directly off of the 4S from the PDB. So there are many ways that you can configure this. And because I don't have a transmitter connected and turned on, you're not going to see the RSSI shown correctly. But if you look down in this corner, you can see that the voltage is there. And if you look over here in this corner, you can see the timer. Now it doesn't fit quite right on this screen. It's a setting within the camera. That's something that you can change within your camera or your monitor, but that's it. It's there. I have the RSSI at zero. I have the voltage down below and I have the timer here. That's all I wanted. So there it is, guys. I'm going to put a couple detailed pictures on a wiring diagram in addition to what you have right here. All right, that wraps it up for this time. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, consider subscribing and giving a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought about the video by leaving a comment below. And if you have an idea of something that you'd like to see me cover in the future, let me know as well. Thanks, guys.